Ladies and gentlemen, welcome here for the start of another sequence of games on the Clare TV uh, uh, this weekend. A number of games are on. The t this is the first of a number of games, and it is indeed the Senior B hurling final. So it's historic times. I suppose the Senior B is being aired free to air for spectators of both clubs. I know with 200 people now eligible to get in to purchase tickets, it's still a lot of people who possibly can't get to games. And joining me now is Tommy Gilfoyle. Tommy's here now, courtesy of permission from the Clare from the Fecal Kilinina minor management he's allowed to do one day of coverage and I suppose he's got a big day for him next week in the county minor final with Tommy if we can get you back to down to earth now I suppose interesting game now between two teams that probably feel underachieved this year yeah and again I suppose you know they're both one or two games um, you know I spoke to John Condon last week on Clare TV after they had beaten Crusheen and you know at the start maybe mid midway through the lockdown they didn't think there was going to be any game so you know they they decided after their disappointing exit to, to Broadford that they, you know, that they, they would take and play each game as it came. And here we are today in the senior B final. I suppose it is the consolation prize, but I think uh, you know it's great to be alive and playing in the championship season today. And it's a, you know, while it's a, it's a consolation final. I think both teams will be eager to win. I suppose a number of clubs that have have won these these senior Bs in the last century years, they've gone on to have. A decent year the following year and again you know i suppose the thing about both team managements are they're in their first year they had a, a you know a small enough running so you know they would have got uh, cut out maybe you know for with their plans and that at the start of the year they have the next uh, four or five weeks to, to plan and that and you know obviously at this time of the year the inter-county teams are back training now and then and you know just looking through and we'll go through the teams in a minute there you know there are big 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 names missing particularly on the clanlara side we knew john conlon was out already and you know, Tots O'Connell and, and Colm Gelvin have now joined him. So, Clonlara look like today that you know they're building for the future. You know, they have a lot of young players there, and uh, they'll be keen and eager to you know to, to, to put on a good display today. You just mentioned that Colm. They said John Conlon looks like a man that's going to be back in action next year. But Colm Gelvin seems to be a man that has a few wishes to deal with. Yeah, I was just talking to him there a couple of minutes ago, and unfortunately, he has broke down again with a groin strain. So, he's going to have to get that looked after in rehab. So. At this stage, you know, I'm not. I don't want to speak on top of on behalf of Colum, but uh, you know, he's looking doubtful for for, for Clare uh, for the for the coming months. I suppose there's a few, as you want to maybe go through a few of the changes. A lot of changes on both sides because obviously they're going week by week now, and the program is probably a couple of weeks over. You can maybe mention some of the changes we think are the the position, the personnel changes, wherever we're positioned. Up. Yeah, and again, uh, Colum Galvin has gone from wing back and Tots is you know uh, at full forward, and you know both big leaders and you know big game players. And on the other hand. The market it looked like they have, you know, of the team that selected, there's one, two, three, four, five, six gone from the, to the starting lineup. And again, you look down through the subs, a lot of them are young players. They're getting a the chance to come in. You know, teams that have played maybe, you know, they've, they've put their name forward from the previous two games. So, you know, today is a final. They're probably board managements are saying they're, they're giving these young lads a chance, yeah, you know, building for the future. There's, there's as many Gilfiles playing with Newmarket and Ferguson as there's playing with Fecal. There, there is, yeah. You know, I, I, I have three nephews, uh, three, three big men, and uh, you know they'll be keen to, 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 to put on a good display today. Um, you know, and again, I have another nephew involved in the minor, the minor B final this evening, Tiernan and Slattery. So a big day out for us, and uh, you know, again, as I said, you know, to be playing on a day like today in the final, you know, that's all you could hope for, and you know, brilliant weather. Uh, you know, we'll just have to wait and see how the matches pan out. I suppose it's nearly probably very difficult to even consider how the pattern of this game is going to go because, as you said, there's probably 10 players that would be lining out for Newmarket and Clonera not involved today. Yeah, and again, you know, you know, will it have the same intensity and cut and throat as it is in the Championship? I think it probably will to a certain extent. As you said, you know, with the amount of changes coming, coming, coming on, on board from the teams that have been picked, you know, will there be any great continuity or, or, or styles of play I don't think so I think both teams will go at it hammer and tongues and uh, you know I won't say hope for the best but you know hope that it happens on the day today and uh, you know the pitch is in brilliant condition there's a slight breeze blowing down towards the, the road gold side here so you know that could be a factor and uh, it could come down to look at Tots was the free taker uh, you know for Clanlara there will be you know, there will be frees. Who Colin Ryan? We know what Colin Ryan can do. On the other hand, so you know if it's a tight game, it could come down to the free takers. You're probably looking 
it, the one thing about the senior B is guys oh, okay. don't lose their championship well, status yeah, from intermediate yeah. and junior. So guys get to play at a higher grade and maybe right. test themselves and show themselves out for the manager for next year. Yeah, and again, you know, I mean, they were probably, you know, oh, were in the championship, I suppose, they were waiting for you know, teams to play and they weren't going to waste players and, as you said, lose their, sta lose their, their, their junior or intermediate status. And in the market's case, you know, there's a good lot of these guys that would have played intermediate championship they are now seeing yeah, under no again, new management John, John, John Tui can they make the right. step up and whatever they'll gain today you know will stand to them going forward Clonlara you know have a lot of, of probably you know more prominent players at underage they're featured on county panels and you're looking down there through the Fitzgeralds the O'Loughlins you know Ian Galvin Connor Burke you know they're all you know have played for Clare all very skillful players and I suppose the bottom line is, uh, Mike, I think you know, both clubs would have been disappointed to exit the championship, but probably the manner, you know, they would have probably four, felt five, that they didn't uh, play up the standard. And today, is, again, it's a consolation. It's a, it's a, it's a chance of, uh, of, of rejuvenating their year and ending them with a bit of silverware. If the senior B was nearly on before the senior championship, like if you, if, if you had been lucky enough to get two so or three in the, yeah, games, in the into the year, you same probably would have a different yeah. team in championship. Yeah. Would, yeah, and again, like I mean, it was just a matter of hitting the ground running. There was a couple of yeah. challenge yeah. games to be played. Um, they didn't really carry any significance. No, again, because at that stage, you know, clubs had probably, you know, the beauty about the lockdown was that some days that may have hadn't trained or may have been away were around. So instead of having smaller panels, right. they ended up with bigger panels. Guys kept is lads weren't involved with county the whole mechanics of the training you know even though it was condensed into a couple of weeks you know yeah. some clubs then went too hard they got picked up injuries missed the first round you know so the first round wasn't to be all the indoors some clubs held back you know for the, the knockout stages particularly in the second round so today it's it, 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 it'll be a culmination of a, of a short year you know who wins the, the consolation uh -huh. prize at the and end of it? Which you just keep have to track as well of who scores, right? It's probably isn't it brilliant yeah, that people yeah, get so a chance to come in now? You know, it's only 200 yeah, people. You, you, you somehow still have given them a chance to see games that they were sort of looking through gates for the last two months. Yeah, you know, I mean, every club has brilliant, loyal supporters. You know, they're crying out to get in, as you know, we see on social media the, the lengths that they go to leathers, trees, tops of vans, sitting on walls, going in the back gate, you know, and that's just fecal. That's, that's exactly, yeah, and then, you know, and again, look at, it is the lifeblood of, of rural places and, you know, Hurland has a special place in the parish of the market, and Clonlara, hail, rain, sleet or snow, you'll have those supporters out, they couldn't come out this year, you know, they were forced into watching it on, 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 on social media, some of them don't like that, they rather, I think, one of the ads, I won't mention the name of the bank, nothing beats being there, so, you know, it is a day out, right, a fine day out, uh, you know, and again, you know, big day for the supporters. I suppose we talked to you about the minor A championship final, maybe at half time. But um, call this game if you could, even even at the stat with the status that both teams are in doubt. How do you think it might go? Yeah, I, I think you know, and, and probably the market physically look like they're the bigger, stronger team there. Uh, as I've said, Clonlara have plenty of good hurlers. I think on maybe on the market side with uh, you know the bit of experience there with them, um, you know, in the Barrett, Parig, Macman, Sean O'Connor. Uh, you know, Colin Gilfoyle, uh, Colin Ryan, they just might edge it maybe with experience. But when you look at it on the other hand, you know, you have you have up and coming players, as I said, like the Fitzgeralds, the O'Loughlins, the Galvins, all game winners on their own. So you know, it'll, it'll 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 depend on what way what what way the game develops. If it's a tight game, you say it could come down to a free tear, give her experience. There's no real pressure on today, and I think both teams will want to go out and express themselves. That was as you said before, team. We don't know. This this could turn out to be one of the better games of the season. If the two teams get into a rhythm, they could go at it hammer and tongs. Yeah, there's no pressure really on today. Like, I mean, it was a case of, you know, that, that it's not the be-all and end-all. It's, it's, it's the consolation final. Was both sets of panels see this as being the, the, the last game of the year. Anyone does not have a county panel. So, you know, they'll be going out and giving, giving it a right lash. And at the end of the day, you know, we just, as you said, it could be a cracker. I don't think it'll be, it'll be a, 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 these two teams have met Often enough, I think the, there's always a spark between them, and and let's hope for you know the, the public at home that are watching and the people that are here that we good to get we get a good game today. And there's only one point between the two of them when they met here nearly two months ago. That's and that's it. There's only a puck of a ball, and as I said, probably both teams have changed uh, drastically since then, through 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 injuries or non-availability. So you know, again, we will just have to wait and see who plays with the breeze, who maybe gets up a lead. We will have to see it and, and, and wait and see. We'll hand you in there to Sean and Owen. I've never seen Owen write as much as furiously in his life. 
Yeah, Owen, Owen is looking particularly dasher in there in the in the in, in, in the box. Is it Christine? It's no, I think he wore an Aerog jersey for that Sheila Kellen and swapped the jer- swapped the jersey. So I think he's he's he never, dressed he never in took red off the jersey. He's dressed in red. Yeah. So hand you over to Sean and to Owen for the first half. Thanks very much to, to Michael and Tommy down there pitch side and. Uh, I suppose, Owen, just before we, we have a look, Johnny Healy is making his way onto the field now um, at the teams. I suppose there's numerous changes on, the, on both sides, but um, I suppose maybe the early rounds of the senior B isn't taken too seriously, but when teams get to finals, they like to win a bit of silverware. Definitely, and I think, you know, for both teams, uh, you know, it's build, they're building blocks at the moment. So they're trying to blood some new players in. Obviously, these two teams met in the 2008 uh, final, and they were very dominant in the early part of the last decade. But this is a new decade now, and a lot of new players coming through. Injuries to the older players, so they have to find those, those newer ranking players now. And if you look at it, um, the senior B, the, neither team can turn their nose up at it at this stage, you know. And, and particularly in this year, when they only got two senior A championship games, and have, have been able to get three in the, in the senior B. So they are good building blocks, but when you look at it, your market have only won one of their last eight senior A games, the regular championship games, and Clonara three out of eight. So they aren't, they're the kind of statistics that say that you have to be you know, trying to build again, have building blocks, and a senior B is a good platform for that. And I suppose one of those wins that Clonara had in their last eight, as you say, it was the first round meeting of the senior A, which took place here as well, I suppose roughly about two months ago now, yeah. uh, a match which Clonara won over in the market, 19 points to 114, a nice, I suppose, tight affair, uh, and we'd be hoping for something similar again today. Definitely, yeah, I think both teams will admit that they were a little bit rusty on the day, nothing between the sides, they actually both led in, in the, the latter couple of minutes, I think they were level on, on six occasions coming down the, the final straight, and it was just that little bit of an extra age actually Michal and Lachlan got the last two points to just edge Clanlara over the line but Newmarket were ahead as late as the 55th minute so th- look I don't think there'll be much in it again today I think it's very good for, for both to be trying to turn out those new players we've seen the likes of Colm O'Mara I think has been performing brilliantly for Clanlara I think one to watch for, for Newmarket as well is Peter Power really really lively we saw him with the St Flannans earlier on in the year and you know he's a player that can do damage in the future so interesting to see particularly for their so- both sets of supporters that they can see those younger players coming through and I suppose uh, from the programmes that we were handed at start there's many <laughs> changes so, you could uh, them up. You're, you're going to take us through the, through the two teams at the moment as they're actually going to line up uh, thanks very much well in goal for uh, Canlara oh, we'll just stop for the national anthem Was just before we start, uh, you know, Clonlara are playing against that strong breeze on your market. Have that strong breeze in the opening half, but for Clonlara, it's Killian O'Brien in goal. Jared Powell is at cornerback. Paul McNamara fullback, and Killian Finnessy in the other corner. Then it's Jathan McMahon, Oshin O'Brien as centre back, and Colm O'Mara. A midfield pairing of Aidan Moriarty and Ian Galvin. Then you have Parik O'Loughlin, you have Dave Fitzgerald, and Michal O'Loughlin in the full forward line of Cormac O'Donovan, uh, Dylan McMahon, and Connor Burke. That means that Seamus Downey, Nicky O'Connell, uh, Kyle O'Connell and Cullum Galvin and Mike White are out of that starting team. And for your market, it's Porrick uh, Gilfoylis in goal. Shane O'Brien is corner back. Then you have Sean O'Connor, the captain at full back. And Porrick McMahon is in the other corner. Then you have Niall O'Connor at wing back. And Barrett and Stephen Casey make up the half back line. Then it's John Fehley and Connell Ryan at midfield. Then you've got the two Gilfoyles on either wing. You've got Owen on the right. Um, and then you've uh, Shane Lynch centre forward and Colin Gilfoyle on the left wing and then a full forward line of Aina Crimmins, uh, Mikey McInerney and Peter Power. 
And I suppose look the standouts from that obviously you look through the, the noticeable names for Clonara that are missing, you've Colin Galvin, you've Nicky O'Connell, you've you've Tots inside in the, the full forward line. Um, so it's gonna be an opportunity for some of the younger players to I suppose uh, show what they can do ahead of an extra championship. Definitely, and I think the two O'Loughlins will be key to them. I think Mia Hall has particularly stood up in, in both their games so far. He he led the line against Newmarket and also uh, against Broadford in that game, albeit a, a losing side and we're off. John Feely now in possession as he carries the ball in inside towards the 45. He's looking inside for Peter Power in the corner. But the ball breaks out and it breaks instead as far as uh, Oshin O'Brien. And Oshin delivers a long pass down. Looking for Ian Galvin. Ian Galvin carries it inside the 65. Looks for that crossfield ball. Looking for his runner to see if it'll come across. Breaks instead of... Uh, off Cormac in, inside, Cormac had done it in battling for possession, still inside, but won instead by Enda Barrett. And Enda passes it out over as far as Sean O'Connor, and Sean works it out to Colin Ryan with a long relieving clearance. Down it goes all the way, down as far as Peter Power again. Peter takes possession, takes the two touches, lays it off. He was looking for John Feely again, but instead the ball breaks down here around the centre. Work back now as far as Owen Gilfoyle. Owen has the first opportunity to lay, and the ball travels out to the right hand side of wide. Yeah, and look, if New Market have that breeze, they're going to have to make the most of it in, in the open half, and their first attack didn't really go according to plan, but Owen Gilfoyle and Colin will be the ones they're looking for for scores. Oh, Killian O'Brien now restarts us with a long puck out down the far side of the field and I suppose that for the first time as well uh, players are getting the experience playing in front of the crowd again on you with 200 allowed in I'm not sure have we quite the 200 but there is a couple of voices around again which is great to hear Yeah look I suppose we're getting used to hearing what the, every player and every manager says on the line <laughs> so yeah look good to have an atmosphere great for some supporters at least to to, to be able to come back in and watch games. Look, it's, it's what everyone looks forward to, the big games, and particularly finals. You want to see uh, some bit of a crowd and, and the diehards that say let in at least. So, a free and order by referee uh, Johnny Healy there moments earlier, and uh, Michal Lachlan now is just steadying himself over the free. He's roughly 60 metres or so out, um, and he's halfway, I suppose, between the, the sideline and, uh, and the goalpost as we look at it. So, uh, Michal is just going to settle himself in. He'll hope to register Kalnara's first score of the day as we head towards the second minute of play. The ball is dropping in, but it does have the distance straight over the black spot, and that uh, puts Kalnara into a one point to no score lead. And uh, they'll be happy, as you said, which then against the slight breeze at the moment, but they'll be happy to have got the, the first score registered. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Michal Lachlan is very, he's on airing from freeze, really, has been their, their go to guy so far. And particularly with a lot of those experienced players out, he'll be the one to try and lead the, lead the drive. Aidan Moriarty now delivering that ball inside, he delivers it in, the ball breaks, but it only breaks as far as John Keeley and John picks it up and here comes his clearance as it goes in and he's looking inside, uh, inside for uh, number 24 to Mikey McInerney, Mikey taking up the, the brow of the square at the moment and he's in a, in a tussle there now at the moment, the position held up in the corner as Kilnara trying to recycle it back quick whip on the ball and the ball breaks out and it's John Feely again is, is the man who comes towards it he lays off that pass as far as Gilfoyle Gilfoyle steadies himself now he gets his chance off opportunity goes in we watch for the umpires but uh, a second opportunity for the market for the second wide registers yeah and both come from the Gilfoyles we mentioned they're going to be the, the key guys for them but uh, you know they have to just hone the radar a small bit and, and, and use this wind as we mentioned before Mihala Lachlan takes that short puck out and the uh, ball is transferred now over to the far corner as Tonara now hope to register their second score of the day and uh, indeed they do straight away and that's off the stick of Dylan McMahon who's lining up inside the corner forward. Yeah, Dylan is a great young player, you know, he's uh, really made his mark in the last couple of years and kind of made his debut last year and is trying to develop a, a place in the team so, you know, a really important player for them and that's a good start for Tonara against this breeze. Just over three and a half minutes played here now in the first half of the Senior B final, the first of the uh, adult hurling finals to be played here in Clare and uh, it's two points to Clonara. it's no score to the market and it's Clonara who are on the attack again as we watch that ball break, breaks here around the centre and uh, straight away in to nip the ball away, he's uh, is the Clonara attackers, is, he's surrounded now by 20, uh, by number two which is uh, Parik McMahon there for the market and he delivers the ball, in it goes in towards the corner, Foul seen by referee uh, Johnny Healy. That foul was on Aina Crimmins as he was trying to make his way inside Killian Finnessy's uh, defensive efforts, and uh, it'll provide an opportunity now for Colin Ryan in the market to steady the ship and open their account. Yeah, it's soft free. It looked, uh, to be honest, uh, I think both players were surprised, uh, the defender and, and the attacker, but it is a good opportunity now for New Market to, to open their account uh, here because. Uh, 
Callum Ryan is, is very, very adept, as we all know, from, from free. So might be a good settling score from the American. They just need to get off the mark and just settle into the game because, you know, a couple of ru rush shots at the start, you know, just, just a bit hurried and they just need to settle into stride. No better man than Colin Ryan to do so. Just under five minutes now on the clock as Colin just steadies himself roughly about 45 metres out from goal over towards the standing side of the field as we look at it. Supporters in the stand are happy with it, the umpire is happy with it and the market get off the board. Yeah, Colin Ryan, you know, in the first two games that they played against uh, Clanlara Line in the morning, he got uh, 15 points all from free. So look, you, expect a, you expect a high standard from him and again he's, he's showing up there. Oh, it breaks here as far as in the bar and it carries the ball over he transfers it to Owen Guilfoyle oh and now gives away a possession as far as Galvin that's Ian Galvin now with possession Ian takes his shot in but it's drifting off to the left hand side as we look at it over the rest of the post and now wide and it's going to provide an opportunity for Barry Guilfoyle just to steady the ship and restart but uh, at the moment as we're watching it all every time the Clonara are getting the ball up into their forward area they're nearly getting a, an opportunity out of it yeah and no, absolutely they're maybe making the most here but it looks like uh, Newmarket can get equaliser and straight over the bar there for uh, for the stick of Owen Gilfile as we looked at it so Owen taking that quick puck out ball broke in over the top got onto the end of it and Owen registers the market's first point from play and we're tied now at two points apiece with just over just under six minutes on the clock here in the second half or the first half yeah, and can we go again? In the Barrett now, in the, under that ball, takes it, delivers it as far as Colin Ryan. Colin playing the ball in inside. He was looking inside for Aina Crimmins. The ball breaks the stage inside for Mikey McInerney. A battle for position is going to ensure here towards the corner. And it's in the hands of McInerney as he comes towards the 21, gets his shot off with a sharpened grip. Umpires are looking at each other. And uh, it's, uh, I suppose, just reward for the for the pressure that he put on the corner and the fence. Yeah, look, he's, you know, he has two young players around him and he's a great target man to have Mikey McInerney really really strong player and that's three in a row from your market now and as I said you know Colin Ryan just getting that settling score and they seem to be going into their stride now Hurley played as the ball was travelling in over the defence there as Johnny Healy spotted it and it's going to be a free out now for the market and one from the distance where it's awarded yeah it's Colin Ryan who's gone for the ball and uh, Colin will fancy his chances from here on definitely you know as he's on 65 but you know distance won't be a problem especially with this with this breeze here behind his back uh, he definitely had the distance, just about the accuracy now. And if can Mark get four in a row, you know, it'll really uh, put them into a good platform because, uh, you know, they had to come from behind. And, you know, th there is a quite a strong breeze here. So I think it will have a factor, especially when legs get and bodies get tired in the second half. Johnny Healy now gives Colin the go ahead and watch as he just settles himself over. Here goes the strike, looks to be on target, but will it have the distance? It doesn't. It just drops into the hands of Killy. Killian O'Brien in the goals, and Killian is breaking out beyond the uh, the efforts there of Mikey McInerney. And Mikey is a judge to have fouled him as he was coming to clear it, and that will give uh, an opportunity you now for Killian to relieve the pressure uh, much easier than uh, than when he was being followed. Yeah, I th again, uh, I thought it was quite soft. You know, that could have gone against him for, for over carrying, really. Um, well, he was lucky to get the free and Clanara would be very relieved to get out of danger because you know he, he was strong to get that from under the crossbar um, was happy to get in his hand and look it's, it's an opportunity for Clanara to try and have a counter-attack they have plenty of lively forwards you know they've got some great young players in, in the side and Aidan Moriarty and Dylan McMahon as we mentioned and Conor Burke is a really powerful player if they can get the ball in there ball breaks in over the top and uh, there again is, is Barrett at centre back from the market and he breaks out looking for Gilfoyle Gilfoyle has the shot he's going to have the distance but I don't think he's going to have the accuracy no it goes to the right hand side the near post to see the shooting shot and drifts wide and I suppose one thing the market will have to be careful of as we said we did they do have that bit of a breeze and they have to try and start making these opportunities count more yeah they're just hitting from distance which is you know it's not advisable really you know and, and all the good fights have come from, from distance from Colin Gilfoyle's got two and Owen Gilfoyle's got the other one so it's important for him to get on target opportunity for Palmer and he makes no mistake at all and he trots back inside there towards the full forward line having registered his first point of the day and he ties up matters here at three points apiece with just eight and three quarter minutes gone here now in the first half yeah look it's an intriguing game we've been levelled twice now in the opening minutes so it makes uh, oh there's a, a kind of a hard challenge there I think just totally accidental though yeah, uh, just as uh, I think it was uh, Peter Power possibly coming out to get the ball uh, for the market and as Ian Galvin was, was heading back, the two bodies just accidentally collided. But in full honesty, I think going for the ball, as you said, Owen, and uh, 
which is uh, just uh, unfortunate. Or Ian seems to be back on his feet now, which is good to see. And uh, and Peter likewise is making his way in. So a free award of it nonetheless for Clonara. And uh, Killian O'Brien is the man now that, that's coming out. But I suppose going back to that last score, you could just see the experience that Cormac has. He was patient, he waited. And when the minute the opportunity opened, he made no mistake. Yeah, and he didn't play in the, the opening game against your market. So he's the type of experience, particularly when the players are out like Colin, uh, Kyle O'Connell, obviously, and John Connell is gone, and Cullum Galvin, you know, Nicky O'Connell, a huge player for them in terms of experience and, and that winning know how. Ball breaks inside and Colin Ryan and Cormac O'Donnell another two battling for it. Colin gets a little flick in it, he puts it out over the sideline and uh, it's going to be a line ball just inside the 21 metre line now for Clonara and we'd be expecting that uh, if uh, they can connect with this one that it's going to travel across in towards the square or so. We'll just watch and wait for a bit of movement inside. Here it comes but connection wasn't there with it and the ball instead makes its way as far as Sean O'Connor and captain of the market on Fergus team just relieves that pressure straight down but Instead, it's Oshin O'Brien who's underneath it. Oshin gets the ball, it's transferred now as far as Ian Galvin. Ian goes, wins possession, just breaking over the halfway line, heading towards the 65. Bounces the ball on the run as he goes. He's trying to avoid the attempts of three different the market players. And in the attempt to transfer it back, he turned the ball over. And uh, instead, it's the market now looking inside towards McInerney. Ball breaks in behind, and Killian O'Brien comes out off his goal line. He picks up the ball and he's looking for Mikey Lockton here. We all has it now. He's been more than in front, but we all is going to carry the ball forward himself, now he releases it forward, he's going to stay in play, just does. comes off the feet of John Feeney, out over the sideline, and uh, it'll be a line ball for Tonara, but if Cajal and Ockham hadn't seen that pass earlier, the opportunity was on. Yeah, no, it was, and we won't say too much, he's right in front of us here, so <laughs> that's a great cut though, across the field. Straight in towards the 21 metre line, the ball breaks, and it breaks there as far as Parik for Lachlan. Parik with his first opportunity of the day, and he makes no mistake uh, off that line ball, which was cut in by his brother here, uh, Michal. Parik picks it up on the 21 metre line, straight over the bar, and uh, Clonero will be happy with the spread of scores at the start. Definitely, and you know, there's an innate understanding between the brothers, uh, Michal, the older one, giving it to the younger one, Clark, and Michal has it again and on the attack. Just breaking forward towards midfield, he's looking for the offload. He finds the offload this time straight away, and it's in the hands of David Fitzgerald. David Fitzgerald has the shot, and again he takes his opportunity. And as we look at it now, I think that's, uh, that's five points on the board and possibly five different scores. On, isn't it? Five different scores, and you couldn't ask for any better. And actually, in the, in the opening round as well, I think your market only had five scores, and Calara had nine. So I think that that bit of balance, you know, they're not over relying on one or two players, whereas New Market possibly the two Gil Files and, and Colin Ryan have been there as the main scorers. So I think that stands to Clan Lara and it's, it's showing so far in this game as well. Colin, uh, Colin Finnessy, uh, Gillian Finnessy, the man who won the puck out back there, playing a corner back for Clonera. He was fouled as he tried to come out with it, and Killian O'Brien is going to have another opportunity now to lay siege upon the market goal. So down it comes towards the 21, Karma comes out to win it, but instead it drifts behind, and it's going to be picked up now. And hand pass that goes astray, but luckily enough for the market, it goes astray as far as Stephen Casey. Pressure on though, and the ball breaks inside, coming off his goal line inside is Parik Gilfine. Parik has the ball in his hand but he's under pressure, will he be able to get it out towards the side? Here it comes towards the 21 and it's coming out now as far as the one. Owen Gilfoy loses out to, to Michal, Michal plays a cross field ball, looking for Ian Galvin, Ian catches the ball, high tackle comes in, Ian gets the shot off nonetheless, it's going to be short and Johnny Healy's going to bring it back. Advantage not a goal and Clonaro, Michal and Lachlan now will have an opportunity for his second free in the day. Yeah, he, look, he was just caught around the neck there. Again, you know, there wasn't too ma much malice in it, but it was a free. It meant he had a free shot at the goals. It just went a bit short, but it, it's an opportunity now for Michal Lachlan to add to their score. And, uh, you know, this is a great start for Clonaro, as we said, particularly when they were playing against the Breeze, to have double scores, you know, just as we're coming up to that first water break. A great boost for them to be going in, uh, into that a bit of a recess. And I suppose just going back a couple of minutes earlier, that straight hand pass, they were lucky it came as far as Stephen Casey for the American yeah. defence because if it had gone the wrong way, the pass was open for goal. And then even after that, you know, Sean O'Connor was blocked down by Conor Burke. You know, a possible goal chance. You never know what way the ball's going to fall when, when you have a bit of a, a break like that. But the market were lucky to, to come out of danger. So he all takes his opportunity straight over the bar. Second scoreable free of the day. And uh, he 
makes no mistake whatsoever and he extends the lead now out to six points to three to Clonera. As we look at it, just nearly 14 minutes on the clock, a short puck out is very Parik McMahon. Parik delivers the ball down towards, uh, down towards the wing and now down it comes, but David Fitzgerald is the man in position. He delivers it in his first goal, but Donovan Carmack no good. Taken on the market defence again, a high tackle just across the helmet as he was breaking the, uh, beyond the attempted uh, pass there, Shane O'Brien. The man who was following him, Shane's hurley accidentally just clipped the helmet of Cormac and it's going to, pre I suppose, pre present Michal O'Loughlin now with another opportunity to uh, extend the lead out just before the water break. Yeah, and, and a fifth point in a row, possibly, you know. And look, I just think, you know, Clannara that bit sharper at the moment. You know, they've got a bit of pace inside it. They're lively. They're just that bit sharper at the ball. And I could see, we see that from the freeze. I think the, the free count so far is 5-2 to, 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 to Clannara. So... You know, it just it bodes well for Clannara going in there. You know, all their players are fine. There's not just one threat. There's threats all over the place, and they're really running at at Newmarket and getting dividends from it so far. So Mihal now settles himself over his third opportunity of the day, second one in the, in as many minutes, and he makes absolutely no mistake that free won by Cormac O'Donovan inside, and uh, Johnny Healy decides that now with just 15 minutes exactly on the clock, it's the perfect time for a water break. So. As we said, Owen Clannara heading to that break now with a four-point lead. Uh, they were they were three points up. The market came back level and they've kicked on again now. So I, I suppose the last seven or eight minutes, they'll have been very happy with the outcome. Definitely. Uh, you know, they've, they've just gathered that bit of momentum. You know, they're against the, the conditions at the moment. But I think, you know, crucially, you know, the game now, is, it's, you know, the new game, we'll call it, is now four quarters. Clannara wouldn't have wanted that water break, if you know what I mean, they were on that bit of momentum, they were flying it then, they've got, you know, uh, five scores in, in the space of it, in as many minutes, so they were flying it, would you want a water break at that stage? I don't think so, whereas Newmarket, uh, on the opposite side, craved a water break, they really want one because they started uh, quite well, they bounced back after Clannara's two point start, they got three in a row themselves, they were pushed themselves into a good position, they have a strong breeze at their back, but then just kind of fell asleep for the last couple of minutes. So it's a good time for them to have a wake-up call. And uh, it's, it's just funny the way these, these water breaks seem to be working, you know. Uh, before, you, you wouldn't get an opportunity until half-time, and, and at that stage, maybe the game is over. But it's a similar pattern to the, the opening game that they had for between uh, the two teams uh, two months ago, because Clannara were the ones to take on that uh, mantle in the opening half. Uh, they were, I think they were 10-6 up, just coming into half-time, and then your market got a goal to, to bring it back. Um, so your market are probably going to need something similar here, because you, know, you don't want to go in at half-time having to face into the conditions of the second half with a deficit. So uh, I hope this water break worked for Newmarket and that they get back on track because we're hoping for a good game here in this in this final and at the moment it's Clannara that are really, really on top. And both teams now just breaking away from their huddles and uh, they're heading towards the position. We'll be starting with a puck out down at the far end of the field as we look at it, Parik. He'll find the man in position and Parik now is looking for Colin Ryan but waiting instead there is O'Loughlin and uh, it's Parik O'Loughlin this time. Parik is hoping to punish the puck out but no, it just goes to the left hand side and drifts off and drifts wide and the score remains at seven points to three but uh, it very easily could have been an opportunity for Clonara to extend again on. And that would have been a, nearly a double score because you know, you're it's new markets puck out it would have been a really inspirational one for Clannara particularly after that uh, water break but they're on the attack again O'Shane O'Brien delivering that ball in inside towards the square the ball breaks in behind and in inside is Conor Burke Conor in a race for position with Parik Ilfoy Parik just wins it for the market and gets it out as far as Sean O'Connor Sean O'Connor steps out over the in line in position and it's going to be a 65 now for Clannara and another opportunity for them to hopefully register their 8th score of the day uh, I suppose it is a, a 65 but we are out towards the side and it won't be the easiest one that, that he's had but given uh, the form that he's in at the moment on you'll be really expecting this one to sail between the posts. Uh, definitely yeah look he's, he's been very adept to them all year and I think I think before Sean O'Connor got the ball in his hand the ball had just drifted out over the, uh, over the sideline and uh, Park Gilvoyle you know very quick off his line he had to be against Conor Burke there and uh, you know interesting that three Gilfoyle brothers on the same team the twins of Owen and, and, uh, and Park and then the older brother in Colin so you know it's a family affair and no more than the Alachlan's there in Park and, and Michal. So Michal is the man now with the latest opportunity he's his 3-3 three, three scored uh, all were inside the 65 this is his first one from a 65 and it's absolutely no mistake there from Michal straight over the bar and he registers his fourth to Lara's eight score of the day and uh, as we head with 18 and a half minutes played it's eight points now three in favour of Clannara, long puck out from Parik, looking down, he was looking inside, I think McInerney was coming out to try and win it, and uh, Mikey is still battling, but it breaks as far as Colin Ryan, Colin shifts the ball back here now, back it comes towards uh, 
O'Connor, I think, is the man in possession. He delivers that ball in. It goes in, but it's going to drift off and it's going to going to drift wide. And uh, again, it's uh, another wide. Unfortunately, from a Newmarket point of view, we I think Tonera have only one on the board, but uh, Newmarket have four now. So um, yeah. And look, I mean, they're all similar angles. You know, they're going from distance. They're hitting hope shots, and with the, with the wind, they want to be getting into the scoring zone. They have very, very potent forwards inside there, and a lot of pace with Peter Power, Aina Crimmins, and now it looks like Shane, Shane Inch is at full forward. So if they can get, the, I think they'd be more advisable to get the ball in there. Ian Gilfoyle taking the pass now off, and he lays it off straight as far as Conor Burke. Conor Burke gets his opportunity. He takes it on, but I don't think it's going to drift inside the post. Indeed, it doesn't. It stays left of the post as we look at it. Goes out and goes over the, the, the in line and goes wide. And uh, uh, I suppose both teams will be hoping to settle. We've had a, a run of wides there now in the last couple of minutes, where in the in the first quarter everything was nearly still in between them. I, but, you know, Conor won't mind that. You know, they have a five-point gap here, and they're against the conditions. So. Uh, Conor Burke, you'd expect him to score. Like, he, he, unfortunately, just didn't on this occasion. Got a great pass inside from Ian Galvin, but you know it doesn't take. It looks like there's going to be a booking here. And uh, very Power is the man he's speaking to at the moment. Didn't see what happened myself either, run, but obviously it was either something in the chase or, or, or slightly late, maybe. But he has picked up a yellow card, and. Uh, Colin Ryan just having a word now with Johnny and I'd say it could even be in relation to there was a small bit of upset there that uh, Oshie O'Brien wasn't pulled for a free earlier and possibly a few verbals may have been the result of that but you know a very open and friendly game though there isn't a bad uh, pull in it so far anyway but uh, um, you know hopefully he continues like that and have a good, good nature Niall O'Connor gets the ball now Niall delivers it in, in towards the corner Peter Power just after picking up his yellow, he's hoping to make amends for that from a marker point of view. He does indeed on the super score out near the sideline. Yeah, look, he got the yellow card a couple of minutes ago and he said, I'll prove it to you on the field, maybe. Uh, got a great score. And look, I spoke about him before the game. He's a really, really uh, promising talent. And that's a great score from the, from the corner. Breaking down, but it's only broke as far as uh, Aidan Moriarty. Aidan working it in. Cormac has an old Cormac heading towards the goal. He flicks it out towards the side. Goal opportunity on, but it just goes too high. He went over the bar. And uh, I think that was off the stick of uh, possibly Dylan McMahon. I think it was on the finish of the it? Yeah, look, that had goal written all over. He just lifted his head as he was about to strike the ball. Uh, maybe he turned in celebration. I don't know. But that's a good opportunity. But at least they got a point out of it. Long puck out again, they're looking for Colin Gilfoyle over on the far side, goes, touches Colin's hands but goes out over the sideline and uh, the, the linesman on the far side of the field indicating that it's going to be a Clonara ball and uh, they're going to have an opportunity now just to relieve that but I think uh, we were talking about the, the relationship between brothers and it's nearly obvious that most of the time when Farrah gets the ball he's looking for that frame of Colin down on the far, on the far wing. Well I'm sure they've practised that a lot maybe at home, I don't know if the garden is big enough for that, for that kind of a puck but maybe down the field you know that they're Poking it out and look, they're two great targets. These two brothers are uh, Colin and Owen, so they're obvious ones. The puck are not really working for for Newmarket at the moment. Not necessarily the goalkeeper's fault, but they just don't have those ball winners, which is probably the reason why Mikey McInerney is brought out to centre forward. So possession now with Michal O'Loughlin. Michal just under 65. He gets a chance to steady himself, but a missy ball is going to drop and it drops inside for Sean O'Connor. Sean catches the ball. He's trying to break out, but Connor Burke keeps him under pres under pressure all the time in a tussle for it now. Where it's O'Connor again that wins it back, but it's going to go astray and it's going to go as far as Ian Delvin. Ian picks up the ball under pressure. He lays it out, but he's a judge to have thrown the ball out when he was hoping to get the pass back to Michal O'Loughlin there in the market now. And Colin Ryan are going to have an opportunity to uh, set up their lane. Attack. Yeah, look at the thin margins between the, the hand pass and the throw these days. I don't know if there's something they can look at because everything looks to be you could pull for a throw these days. Uh, but uh, you know, it's a kind of marginal one, but it's an opportunity for Newmarket. Quick and that's in the Barrett. In the Barrett, in the Barrett opens the shoulders and he delivers, uh, I suppose, a, a crowd rousing score, if you like. <laughs> if, uh, if we had more than the 200 in, you definitely have heard the shout there. But uh, that'll hopefully, from an America point of view, get them uh, back in. And we've 23 minutes played, but we will have at least two more minutes after the 30. So we've nine minutes to go. And if the market now can, I suppose, register a few more scores at 9-6 uh, at, at the moment, they'll be hoping, as you said, with the breeze at their back to go in with a slender lead if not even Stevens. Yeah, look, I just think they need to gather a bit of momentum. Uh, you know, the wind doesn't seem to be too much of a factor as you can see with, Cl with Clannair, but it is quite strong. Um, I just think the market need that bit of confidence. They need to get uh, move through the gears and I think uh, getting a goal would be, uh, you know, a great boost for them just as it was in that opening round, but it's Clannair or in the ascendancy. So, Mihal Arachlan with the latest uh, line cut and he cuts it across and over it goes as far as Ian Galvin Ian holds possession but he only finds Colin Ryan doubles on it first time but it's going to break inside and it's going to break for the Clonara 
defending over it goes shipped over there looking for the free the free is gone and the free is won and Cormac O'Donovan once more using every bit of experience <laughs> he had to pull that one from that's, the That's that's an experienced free uh, you got a little bit of a, a touch in the back and, and went straight over but you know, it's a good opportunity now for Clannara to build back that five-point gap. And, you know, it's probably deserved off the balance of play over what we've seen in, in almost 25 minutes at, at this stage. So uh, you'd expect that Michal Lachlan would be able to, to convert this one. You know, he's he's got the, the th three or four previous ones. So um, you'd expect he's nearly straight in front of the post. So, so 60 metres is, is no problem to him. Michal just walks back from the ball, gathers his thoughts. I hope we don't give a commentator a curse. That's what I was just about <laughs> to say. I think he heard you say it and decided to take a few steps back and take a breather. So, <laughs> so we all now just stands over the wall and we look at it as you say, maybe 62, 63 metres out. Oh. It doesn't, it's Colin Ryan's early and ricochets, but ricochets into the hands of the Clonara oh. and it's going to be another opportunity now for Clonara. And uh, for me, Hall, uh, to make amends for that free, which just didn't gather enough height to get beyond Colin Ryan a moment ago. Yeah, it looks like he broke the hurley. Uh, there was a snap of a hurley somewhere along. I think uh, Niall O'Connor's going to go into the book here. It was quite a strong challenge on, on Dylan McMahon, and uh, he does get a chance to make amends. Just, just hit it a bit low, you know. I mean, it, it, uh, Niall O'Connor is a big man and was able to block it, but does receive a yellow card and a second bite of the cherry for me, Hall, at Auckland. Niall O'Connor becomes the second new market player in the first half to go into the book following the earlier booking from Peter Power and it now presents me all at Auckland with his latest opportunity, 60 metres out from goals, slightly further to the left than his last opportunity but this one he makes no mistake at all with the initial height of it, the ball travels and travels straight over the bar and uh, we all know his four points for freeze plus his 65 so five and a nine scores and uh, really from the market point of view they're going to need to cut out those opportunities for me all. Definitely, you know, he's, and th th those frees are guiding lights and particularly this year, you know, and you know, maybe hadn't had the the bank of training that you could have had free taking has been a vital uh, source in this championship so far. Peter Power in possession, Peter transfers the ball in and uh, he, he was looking for an inch I think inside but the ball is going to break up, there's a tussle for possession and Johnny Healy decides that uh, he's going to award a free and a free in for the market which Colin Ryan is going to make his way over. Uh, to hopefully register his latest score as we look at the top just coming up to 26 and a half minutes on, on it, 9 points to 5 and uh, Colin now will be hoping to reduce that deficit from 4 to 3 from the market point of view Yeah look it was it was 4 at the, four at the water break and uh, you know it's been the same ever since you know they've been score for score so far this will be the third time they've traded points in, in the second quarter so um, it's probably going to be uh, probably going to be Colin Ryan's Easy as free. It's a difficult angle, but you know you expect him to put it over. So free goes in. It's right brought down inside and it goes by Killian O'Brien. There's a tussle for possession in around the square, but it's going to be a narrow defence. They're going to work it out. Killian Finnessy now with the ball in his hands. He lays it out and he brings it as far as Oshin O'Brien. Oshin with a long relieving clearance, but uh, if that ball had broken the wrong way, well, it was a great opportunity. Yeah, to get back into it. it was a bit of a scramble and it would have been a great tonic for Newmark. It's just the perfect thing that they needed and it would have been a mirror image of what happened the last time out so uh, we let off for, for Clannara. Ian Galvin playing the ball in over the head of, uh, of Cormac O'Donovan and instead coming over is uh, the market captain again is Sean O'Connor. Sean delivers the ball but he's blocked out and in turn Conor Burke is blocked again. It breaks as far as Michal Lachlan looking for his first time from play and indeed 21 metres out straight in front of the goals. He was never going to miss that and he extends the lead now out to 11 points to 5. Yeah, and almost you could say a four-point swing, really, because no, it could have been a goal chance for your market. When Tanara went down the other side of the field and, and put six between, it was their biggest lead so far, and they are against this breeze, so it's a quite a substantial uh, advantage, almost coming up to half time. Ball breaking off the hands of Oshin O'Brien. Peter Power is inside, but instead it breaks as far as Crimmins. I think inside he gets his shot Shane off, Lynch. and Shane Lynch is the man who puts the ball straight over the bar. Yeah, look, a good score and a very needed score for Newmarket. You know, they haven't really been firing, and particularly the forward line. And as I said earlier, get that ball in there. They're very lively foot forward inside there. So um, I think that could be a play that they'll probably have to use in the second half. Puck out coming down from top of me on Lachlan, but instead it breaks and it breaks as far as Conor Burke. Conor trying to win position, but it goes off his hurley, travels out over the sideline, and it's going to be a line ball out for the Marcus. And they steady themselves here now. True on Gilf by own, leaves it down, and he jogs away. And Colin Ryan was making his way over, but instead it's going to be left to Stephen Casey. And Stephen stands back from the ball. We watch for the cut up, it goes beyond. 
the 65 but waiting there is the they turn all the men and stay in the ball breaks to Aidan Murray after he shifts the ball over and gets it as far as uh, Cormac Colm O'Mara, Colm O'Mara now giving the ball back as far as Dave Fitzgerald, Dave Fitzgerald plays the ball across the wing, Michal O'Loughlin gathering in position, coming in towards the centre, was hoping to engineer the scoring opportunity for himself but instead is the judge to have taken too many steps and it'll be a free out now and uh, an opportunity from that distance for Colin Ryan to he'll be hoping I suppose he's 60 metres or so from his own goals but uh, on a day like this you'll be expecting Colin to have the range. Yeah, you would, but in a similar position, he just hit under, you know, was caught under the bar by Kieran O'Brien the last time, so he's going to have to hit it a bit more cornflakes this time around. But, uh, you know, Mial Lachlan would have been on a great run. He passed the first defender, didn't see the second one, and then unfortunately had to take too many steps and, and gave away the free. There's the free from Colin. It's going in. There's going to be no problem with distance. There's absolutely no issue with the accuracy either. And Colin registers his latest score for the market. And uh, that brings the deficit back now to uh, 7 points for the market, 11 points for Talara. Just as we're hit towards the 30 minutes on the clock. And we'll wait and see exactly what Johnny Healy is going to play. But we definitely have 2 minutes to play for the water break earlier on so a well one uh, ball there from Niall O'Connor Niall delivering that ball in he's looking inside for Colin Gilfoy goes in over the head but it's going to break Niall tried to get a flick and have a Killian Finnessy is the man waiting Killian picks up the ball it breaks and it breaks as far as Gilfoy again he's bringing it across short grip the ball goes in it's oh. going to be a free oh, in the question is, is uh, I think he is just outside the square so there'll be nothing only a 21 I think going but we'll watch and we'll see now exactly where uh, where Johnny Ely goes up to yeah, that's, I'm not sure about that one now because maybe it was a free for uh, a pull earlier, but you know, Colin Gilfoyle got the shot, it seemed to be blocked, uh, and then he went down. Uh, you know, I, th I thought it was a fair block, I'll be totally honest. So, I'm not sure what Johnny's given it for, but maybe it was for an earlier infringement just before he uh, had the shot. But uh, Paul McNamara looks like he's going to go in the book, so Johnny Healy uh, must have saw something. He's obviously a lot closer than we are, so maybe we'll give him the benefit of the doubt on this occasion. Great opportunity for your market, though. The question is, will they go for it? You know, um, Colin Ryan is obviously a, a great free taker, but I suppose probably advisable to go over the bar at this stage. They are four points behind. Well, Peter Power is going to step up to it, so I would say definitely going to take a point. Yeah, just uh, on the 21 metre line, slightly to the right of the post, as we look at it, Peter Power, the man who was uh, given this latest opportunity, and uh, Peter just bends, lifts and strikes. Makes absolutely no mistake, caps the ball over the bar, and he registers uh, his second point of the day, and uh, he's a point for the market. So back to a three point game again, on. Yeah, look, and it's three in a row for New Market, and we spoke about them needing that bit of momentum before half time, and, and that's just exactly what they got now. So for the remaining time, they want to maybe tack on another two, one or two, and give them that bit of confidence going into a half time break. Puck out there and uh, straight away it's in Moriarty that's on the attack. He hasn't been followed by Colin Ryan. He's a judge to have over carried again. A uh, second time in a similar position on both sides of the field from a Clonero point of view. And uh, it's going to present Colin Ryan with an opportunity. He's probably too far this time to make the distance. But uh, Colin Gilfoyle trying to make his way, or has made his way in as far as the square. His brother Owen is battling with his uh, initial marker to get him beside him here now at the moment. And uh, we'll wait and see exactly where Colin can drop the ball. But he's actually looking across, and this is exactly where he's going. But oh in the barrel, didn't understand what was going on. And instead, it's going to be an opportunity for David Fitzgerald. He has nobody whatsoever around him, and the ball goes straight over the bar. And uh, unfortunately, from Colin's point of view, we could see what he was trying to do, but in the barrel, it wasn't in the same way of a thought. No, uh, it was a gift for, for Clint Harris. I said, David Fitzgerald couldn't believe his luck. He was going on to kind of looking around him to say, oh, what's going on here? Is it like you've been framed or something? But he had the great shot and it's, it was a vital swing for Clenar because the break seemed to be going against him in the last couple of minutes. Cormac O'Donovan now in possession. Cormac tried to give that ball in low but in the Barrett cuts it out instead and he brings the ball up and goes over towards the, the far over side of the field and uh, it's Shane Lynch who had possession and the ball is coming in delivered in. It goes over the head of Colin Wilfell inside who was trying to get in the end of it and it trips out and uh, the market are registering uh, another wide of the day and they're, they're starting to head up now at the moment from yeah, five wides, and you know, you look at the scoreline. There's four in it. You know, they could have done with every one of them. And there's the halftime whistle now. So, you know, it's, it was, you know, unfortunate for Newmarket. They had a free there just uh, right at the end to try and put them on another score, which would have brought it back to uh, two points. And instead, uh, it was a gift for for Dave Fitzgerald to make it four. So, uh, there are the small little margins that are there. But Clanar, you would say, on the balance of play, deserve to be uh, head at halftime. You know, a four point gap is is probably merited uh, on on what we've seen so far. Canlar just seemed to be that bit sharper, but 
your market will get take great positives the last couple of minutes. You know, they got three in a row there. The break started going from. They started to win a few frees, and it's amazing when you get on top. The things start to go for you. You get those breaks. You get the freeze. There's a bit of a spring in your step. You get out in front of your man that bit more. But uh, it makes for an intriguing second half. Um, there's four points in it at the moment, and uh, Clanara do have a breeze, but the wind has never uh, won anything for you automatically. So be interested to see how it goes for the second half. And I suppose when we look across the spread of scorers, there's 12 points on the board, six of them off the stick of Michal Lachlan. He's one from uh, one from play, one from a 65, four frees converted. David Fitzgerald has two, Parik O'Loughlin has one, uh, Dylan McMahon has two, and Carmack O'Donovan has one. So, uh, as we said earlier, there isn't uh, an over-reliance on anybody that whoever the opportunity presents itself <laughs> to is in a position to take it. Yeah, and particularly, you know, you're looking at those young players who are taking responsibility. Conor Burke is a big lad. Uh, a big rugby player as well so you know he's very very strong and when you're missing the likes of John Connolly he's a good target man to have inside there and there are young players in particular you know they won the minor minor A two years ago so they're trying to bid in those players at the moment and we're seeing a lot and I'm very impressed uh, again today with uh, Colm O'Mara at wing back he's been uh, he was on the Clare Minor, obviously at centre back there, um, and you know he's really boosted on from that. And it's a, it's a good debut season for him. Killian O'Brien in goals as well. And we're seeing the likes of uh, Connor Burke and Jaden McMahon and Dylan McMahon, and all those from that minor winning team of two years ago stepping up to the mark. Which, as we said, with all those experienced players missing, is vital. And uh, I think Tommy Gilfoyle and Michael O'Connor are waiting on the sideline at the moment. So uh, we're going to hand you down pitch side and uh, back down to Michael. Thanks very much, sir, Sean. I suppose Tommy. 20 points isn't a bad tally for a first half. No, again, like I think it was a game we expected. It's nice and open. Uh, the market started brightly enough. It took uh, Clanlara a while to settle down, but I think you know Clanlara have probably played the better hurl and then uh, you know, justifiably ahead by by four points. I think you know from a market point of view, you know Parig O'Loughlin has been very sharp. I think he's take, taken up where he left off in the championship. You know he scored most of what he's got. So you know uh, uh, the market will just have to mind that. Whereas on the other hand, I think the market have hit. You know, five or six wides, the temptation is there with that big breeze to go along. You know, and if it works out, it, fine. If it doesn't, you know, it probably should have kept the ball in play. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's everything we expected and hoped for. It's open, it's fast. Just before half time there, you know, the market made a slight rally. So, you know, maybe the team that plays against the breeze, you know, might have a better chance of getting on the ball than, you know, playing with the breeze. But it's how you use the breeze, I think. Uh, so, Sam, at the end of the first quarter, it looked like it was going to be all time there. They seemed to be the stronger team. They were, they were running fast. Karma. Karam Kondunam is showing signs of why he was at the top, the top of his game for years. Yeah, and again, you know, he's using all his experience in his head. You know, they're going to him as a, as a target man, you know, down here in front of us. Uh, he's winning the ball. And I think, you know, he's making good use of it. He, he's laying off the ball. But, you know, I've been very impressed with, uh, you know, David Fitzgerald the midfield has got uh, got on a good lot of ball. Uh, you know, I think it's, 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 it's tight, it's tough. Uh, um, you know, and again, we wonder what sort of intensity in the game would be but you know half time just before half time there you know the, the intensity levels rose and uh, you know I think both teams are taking this game serious and I think you know 12 8 is it, I think is a, is, is a justifiable scoreline at half time. And there are midfield of, of Mariarty and Ian Galvin are picking up a lot of ball and they seem to be driving hard and Mike Mihal O'Loughlin is coming strong. Yeah, and again, it's one thing that, you know, uh, that Clanlara have is lots of pace and movement, you know, but they are picking up those breaks, whereas the market probably have a tendency to be a lot more direct and go, and go longer, whereas uh, Clanlara are playing through the lines, you know, they're playing through their half-forward line. And again, you know, Dylan McMahon, I suppose he was renowned as a, as a county minor at, at wing-back and centre-back. You know, he's playing full forward and he's winning a good lot of ball with Conor Burke inside. They have that size and that strength and I think if they get it in there it'll be interesting what way Newmark will go with the puck out now it won't be going as far uh, you know who they'll puck it I think you know the market will need um, you know Colin Gilfoyle to step up and, and, and win the game win a couple of balls you know the game seems to be passing him by he, he, he's on the outside of the game I think maybe they need to get him into the game I think Clon Lara will be the happier happier team at half time uh, again it might come down to who has the legs and maybe who has the bench to finish out the game instead of a Colin Often a, a fair of intent. You often think you're playing. A, you, you might put it a strong play ball winner on the wing. He might be invisible. Maybe plank him into the square as Carmichael Dunham did last weekend. He came on against Christine at half time and got two goals. 
and after the first goal, Calnar realised, well, now we have a target, and we just go simple. And again, I think if the, if the market are going to go direct, I think you know they need to have someone in there that's going to hold up the ball. I've been very impressed by uh, Peter Power, his you know his movement, and again had a superb minor championship last year for the market. I think you know they need to you know get get him on on the breaks and maybe play off someone uh, at full forward where you know that he, he has the, that undoubted skill. I suppose from your market's perspective now, as you said. They looked at Inver- no one said Devon Berry, but they looked like they were in trouble. They very much can come into this game with a couple of small tweak- tweaks. Yeah, and again, I think in the Barrett, like you know, for the last 15 minutes, has come into you know, one has got a lot of, on a lot of ball at centre back, using all his experience and, 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 and know how they are. So, again, it's how to distribute the ball. I think you know, Clanlair are making better use of the ball and the possession they have, whereas New Market, as I said before, have a tendency to go along maybe in hope rather than design. So Maybe against the breeze in the second half, it may suit the Newmarket forwards a slightly better. And both sides a chance of both. And Dylan McMahon, I think, was it Dylan McMahon or was it yeah. Ian Gavin? Yeah. Dylan, Dylan, he cleaned to him, he couldn't believe he missed it. So. Exactly, you know, got a, got a point. And again, I suppose maybe, you know, probably, as I said, probably he played most of his hurling at, at centre back or that. So, but, you know, he, that's the threat he poses up there. I think a free came short from Colin Ryan there that the goalkeeper brought yeah. down. And, you know, it was a scramble. It could have been a goal either way. It could yeah. have been in either way. So, look at, you know, half time. Still all to play for, you'd say at this stage, you know, advantage uh, Clonlara with the aid of that breeze, plus the way they're playing, but we'll have to wait and see. So if you're ready, we can hand back to Sean and to Owen in the press spot, in the press encounter box. Thanks very much, Michael, for that. And uh, both teams just back out now for the second half. As we said, 12 points to 8 1. And uh, we were just discussing, I suppose, the, the score and threat of Clonlara before we hand the down pitch side. And, uh, I suppose one person that's really impressed you coming into today and again today has been Peter Power. Yeah, Peter Power is you know, very, very lively forward and a very good eye for goal and has got kind of instinctive X factor as well that he's able to uh, have a great, he's got a great flick in the air as well. Here's Aina Crimmins, another good player. And I was unfortunately out of close to the right hand side as we look at it. Ball is way wide, a bit of argument from the, the market lads inside, but uh, Johnny Healy is having none of it. The instruction, the wall was wide and. Uh, out it comes and it's coming towards the far 65 at the moment now up underneath it was there if it's sure but it's going to break in a race for position which John Feely is hoping to win John bringing the ball out now for the market he's looking for a runner off his shoulder out he transfers it over towards the far over side of the field at the moment as we look at it Stephen Casey now getting from the ball in towards Peter Power the ball breaks out it breaks as far as Gilfoy mm. and it's Owen Gilfoy who has it he gives it back in as far as uh, Aina Crimmins again Aina checking on the Clara defence and this time he goes into a range where he's going to make no mistake and straight over the bar. Yeah, look, uh, great for a player like that. He's putting the head down this time and, and making amends for a previous one. It wasn't wallowing in any self pity, just took it on. And he's a great runner with the ball as well as we saw in the, in the minor final last year. Long puck out coming again for Kieran O'Brien. Dominic goes inside the 21 at the far side. It's Carmack O'Donovan now heading for possession. Carmack under pressure. He kicks the ball forward. Can he keep it in play? He does. And all of a sudden he's getting in on top of the ball. Oh, he's pulled hey, down. Hey, and uh, we, we watch his umpire at the moment. And uh, we'll see if uh, if it's inside or outside. But it definitely was on the verge of that square one. Yeah, it was. Look, he was menacing. And, and Carmack O'Donovan is a big man. He's, he's difficult to stop. So I think he had to be brought down. And, and uh, I think Jack, Jack Enright came on there at half time. That was his first contribution was to was to bring Carmack O'Donovan down. And uh, I would imagine it's a penalty. It's definitely going to be a booking here. And he's going to book into Barrett. So that might have means that he was fouled before, before Jack Enright got his hands in him. So um, we'll see what Johnny is going to... But he's leaving us in suspense anyway. That's what we're looking for <laughs> in this uh, senior <laughs> B final. And uh, I suppose we know exactly what... Uh, the, the hurley carriers down in front of us. Many a team would be delighted to have uh, all-star <laughs> hurley carriers, but uh, they are in no doubt whatsoever what uh, what outcome they're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. The John Conlon and Colin Galvin here in front of us here. So uh, two big losses for Clallara, but they're part of the supporters group, the ultras today, um, and uh, hoping to cheer their side on to what would be a, a first senior B for, for Clallara. Um, I think they were in finals in the... 20 years ago against Newmarket, Newmarket won in uh, 2000 and their Clan Lara lost the final in 2001 again. So and he is heading towards the spot on the 21, so it looks like it's a penalty. It is indeed, the hands finally go out. He's awarded the penalty and uh, we see now at the moment who's the player that's in. It's Killian O'Brien who's come all the way up from the Clan Lara goal and Killian is the man who's entrusted us with this opportunity. So 1v1, a number one via number one. Yeah. It's uh, Killian O'Brien for Clan Lara, Parry Kilfoyle now. 
Three it's, goals for the market. It's a big moment in the game. So Killian steadies himself. He's Johnny Healy tells him to wait until he gets all the players back outside the, the exclusion zone at the moment. And uh, he's telling Parik he'll file back on the line. And here we go. Killian O'Brien lifts and strikes. Oh. It goes straight over the bar. <laughs> and uh, it never really looked low enough to trouble Parik. No, I don't think he was brought all the way up there to, to take a point. I, I think uh, Michal Lachlan could have done that. So just, you know, ro maybe yeah. Rosie's head at the wrong time. And uh, uh, unfortunately, that's a big, big let off for New Market. But it's still a score for the Clanera. And the ball now is uh, travelling in as far as Carmack has done it again. Carmack inside the corner. He breaks the tackle there of John Hall. In he comes. The ball transfer to Michal Lachlan. Michal gets a hurly to it. It breaks down in front. He holds up position. And he's going to deliver a ball over to the brother. And he's 45 metres out but just couldn't take position. So he's done three different attempts. But uh, instead it's going to be an American. And it's Mikey McInerney who uh, turned over position. But... Uh, you can just see that telepathic gesture again. Par of Michal heading in on the 21. Parik gave a roar from the 65 and uh, the ball was transferred straight back. Yeah, and you would expect him to get a score. Just fumbled the ball, uh, you know, took his eye off it for a moment and it allowed uh, Newmarket to swarm in and, and get uh, and get possession and, and obviously win the free as well. So it's a big boost for them and let's see what end of Barrett can deliver. And they're dropping that ball. It's going to drop just short of the 21 as we look at it. But up instead is uh, the Colmara defence. And, uh, the ball is travelled. Colm O'Mara. Colm now gives as far as David Fisher. And David Fisher settles himself under no pressure. This is accuracy all in there. And uh, an opportunity, I suppose, the market thought they were leaving pressure. But instead, it was well taken and transferred. Two quick transfers and David Fitz finishes the opportunity. Yeah, and David, that's his third uh, uh, point of the afternoon as well. You know, a great position for him and he's gone to centre forward today which is he was playing at midfield or wing back before so it looks to be a great inspirational switch for Clannara because he's got three points. The ball breaks now Colin Ryan the man in position Colin taking on Oshie O'Brien Oshie is still holding him back but the ball is transferred out oh, and, and Oshie O'Brien I think maybe be a judge on a late tackle Martin. there as uh, the ball went over and it's going to be an opportunity now for Colin Ryan uh, Colin the man I think who's down at the moment he just got a slap across the hand as he was hand passing the ball out as far as uh, Owen Gilfoyle was waiting to, to take the opportunity so if Colin is okay to continue we'll expect him to be the man who will uh, take this free Peter Power hasn't come near the ball so he's expecting Colin to be okay and uh, that just gives I suppose the mark with the opportunity and had gone out to five uh, so if they can put this one over it just brings them back to four and I suppose it just keeps them within that, uh, that distance because as we saw in the semi-final of this competition against Carcassa win the five points were in about a couple of minutes to go one lucky break from the market they got it into the back of the net and all of a sudden they got it as far as extra time yeah and it was the goals on, on that occasion that, that got them right back into the game you know Colin, Gil or Colin uh, Ryan got one in just a crucial time to pull it to extra time then Colin Gilfoyle got one just in the first minute of extra time so I think they're probably going to need goals again because this three, four, five point gap is always seems to be there and, and Clannar is kind of up it's end to end stuff so far but Colin Ryan should be able to put this one over in here and Colin indeed makes absolutely no mistake with that one and he registers his latest one from, uh, from the free and that now makes it 10 points for the market 14 points for uh, Clannara we just have over 6.5 minutes played here in the second half and the long puck out from Killian O'Brien again it's going to drop over the head it looks like it might be a lot but it breaks off his uh, direct marker Stephen Casey and the ball travels all over the sideline and Michal is the man who went for it but instead Clannara are going to move a quick looking for David Fitzgerald but he's not going to win position and it's going to be transferred over and Crossfield ball over they were hoping for runners but Killian Finnessy was the man who read it Killian breaks out towards the 65 gives it as far as Colm O'Mara Colm O'Mara now transferring that ball even inside and taking it on as McMahon and Dylan McMahon it's no. He got his opportunity, but unfortunately, just put it wide, and it's a, a first wide of the second half for for Clannara. Um, but your market are on the attack again. And Killian O'Brien, the man in position here now, as we look at it, Killian just delivering that ball over the 65 as he goes, and over it goes, and it's just going to break in behind. Battle for possession, and Ian Galvin, and Tim McMahon actually the man inside hoping to win it. Ian Galvin now on the outside way, chop over the hurley there of Ian Galvin as he went for it, and that's going to provide an opportunity now 
Cork and Ara and from Mihal Lachlan to come over and register his first free of the second half. Yeah, it's a really frustrating one from a manager's perspective. You know, that kind of chop down in the hurry, kind of a lazy, needless kind of a free to give away, and, and especially to a, a man like Mihal Lachlan who's been so adept at, at place ball so far. And, uh, uh, you know, he's already registered six points, five of those from place balls. And uh, I know he's against the breeze here, but it's well within his range to make it number seven. just taking this opportunity straight over the black spot and Mihal converts as he has done all day and this opportunity to extend the lead back out to five 15 points now for Clonera and 10 points for Marcus. yeah look it's that pattern again it's it's in to end is point for point and that's not much good to New Market well you will be very very happy New Market need to change the narrative they need to try something a little bit different because they're they just seem to be going direct and uh, you know there's no great pattern to it much more uh, uh, method and, and stuff about uh, Clanlara and here they go again. Connor Burke, the man now in possession at the moment. Connor holding up position. He gets inside O'Connor, his direct marker. He transfers the ball back out as far as David Fitzgerald. Davis, who uh, is uh, having a very good afternoon here in Six Mile Bridge, and he registers his four point from there. Yeah, I think he got two in the first half and had two in the second. And you know, he's got that pace, he's got everything about him. You know, a really, really strong player and he's uh, great in the Clare underage teams as well. So that's put six between them and you know that's the largest gap that they had in the opening half as well so it's a big big gap for, for Newmarket to try and bring back and here it goes as far as Fitzgerald again he tried to whip in the first time but instead he's direct marker in the barrel is the man who takes it up looking for Peter Power inside Peter comes out Peter lets the ball be bought himself in the corner back and now he's heading in heading towards the 13 metre line sharns that grip of the stick and straight over the bar and he registered his third score of the day yeah look and it's, it's only his uh, second or third maybe senior game and uh, you know he, he plays with a lot of experience you know he's already got three points today taking the freeze for for Conor Ryan and he did so in the semi-final as well and I think that's to kind of ensure you know the succession line after Conor has gone uh, it's a way of getting a young player to settle when he's taking those close in freeze and, and, and build up that bit of confidence ball breaks to Carmel Cardunov and now Carmel carrying the ball in on top of the 21 at the moment trying to <laughs> come inside the Casey but uh, as he did so and he got uh, I suppose Robbie tackled would be the best way to describe it Owen and it's going to present an opportunity now for uh, Michal O'Loughlin to register his, uh, his latest one and that's the exact same thing that happened to come to men's goal for the penalty you know it was Jack uh, Enright that finished it with kind of a rugby tackle and uh, you know he didn't start he was a care minor a couple of years ago didn't start and you wonder maybe is he injured or something like that because you know it's a strange tackle to make uh, twice in a row I know Enda Barrett got nailed for it in terms of yellow card and and Jack is going to pick up one now, but uh, Conor Donovan is causing a, a lot of problems inside there for Newmarket's line because he's a really, really direct player. Uh, he's a really, really strong player, and of course he's got that experience. He, he scored that crucial winner for Clare in the Under-21 final in, in 2009. So, um, you know, he's bringing a lot to this game so far, as is the free taker here, Mial Lachlan. Mial now on the 21 metre line, halfway between the goals and the sideline. And uh, I think the umpires knew from the minute the ball was lifted, he started moving towards the white flag. No doubt whatsoever. And he registers his second point of three of this second half to extend the lead now. How it goes as far as 17 points to 11. And we watch as uh, P. Williams delivers the ball back as far as uh, Niall O'Connor. Niall half blocked as he delivered the ball in. Bushing O'Brien, the man at centre back, who puts a hand up and it comes out now as far as McMahon. And uh, McMahon picks up the ball, gets it in here now as far as David Fitzgerald. David Fitzgerald taking on Colin Ryan, gets up to the 65, inside the 65. Barrett is coming towards him, lays off the hand pass looking for Burke. But it's going to break and it's going to break as far as Barrett. And Barrett delivers a long relief and clearance. And there was a late tackle just from Conor Burke as in the Barrett was... Uh, delivering the ball down so they expect that this free will be from where the, the ball landed and in a much more favoured position for Colin to convert. Yeah, it, it, probably a bit of frustration for Conor Burke there. He got the pass from David Stewart. It was maybe a 50-50 ball. He didn't win it and just kind of went in late on, on Inda Barrett and, and the one thing that you just really can't complain about is when you have the, the two halves of the hurley in either hand you just can't complain that it wasn't a free because uh, uh, unfortunately he picks up a yellow card for Clannard. The yellow card is starting to, to pick up now as well shows the intensity is there even though there's a, a six point gap in the game uh, Clannard just that bit on top but as I said before you know your market need a goal or some bit of an inspirational uh, defining moment or a turning point in this game to, to try and get them back in the ball's going to free's going to be taken where the ball uh, lands so it is an opportunity but for, for Colin Ryan to add to their tally but you know the gap is just always seems to be there Colin Ryan able to keep them at arm's length and, and that seems to be the pattern of the game so far 
Colin Ryan now is showing the spot of exactly where this free is going to be taken from and I suppose it's uh, roughly maybe 57, 50 me, 8 metres out from the Clonara goal and uh, Colin steadies himself over as Johnny Healy gives him the signal and whenever he's ready he can uh, work away so Colin now just bends over that ball, the strike comes off, he looks satisfied with the outcome, umpires are satisfied inside and uh, Colin registers yet another scored free and it reduces the gap back down to five again. Yeah, he's got, that's his fourth free now but you know, they're probably not getting the scores from play that they desired and, and Colin as well, you know, hasn't chipped in with a, a score from play yet so you might just need to step it up a bit, uh, you know, that point is grand but you know, Clonara always seem to be able to go down and answer the other side and no better man than this man, Conor, Cormac O'Donovan. Yeah, looking for Conor Burke inside, the ball breaks off his hand and said it's going to come out of the the wing and Jack, uh, Jack in right inside, Jack puts up the ball and it's intercepted there and it's going to be an opportunity again now and a latest opportunity, Colm O'Meara, the man that was fouled as Michal O'Loughlin now, the frees are really starting to mount in Clonara's favour. Yeah, they are and you know, we spoke about it already, you know, that you can't give Michal O'Loughlin the opportunity, you can't give five again, just a head high challenge, it was a loose hand pass from Jack Enright as he was coming out of, out of defence, so it's more a bit of frustration setting in for your mark and I think that's what's probably going to happen unless they, unless they arrest that in, in the, because we're coming up to the the second water break now and, and nothing has changed from a new marker perspective you know they would have been happy enough to only be four points down at half time but we're going into the second water break and it could even be possibly six points between them so uh, new market are going to have to do something drastic and, and they'll need this water break as quickly as possible so Michal O'Loughlin again is the man he's just uh, settling himself over 60 metres out from the market goal uh, about 15 metres in off the sideline as we look at it at the moment and uh, they all know with that strike and we follow it and we follow it straight over the black spot and we all registered yet another opportunity as Johnny Healy decides that now is the perfect time with just under 15 minutes on the clock to head for that water break at 18 points 12 for in favour of Clonara. Yeah look as we said before you know Clonara like the first water break did, wouldn't wanted the water break at that time because they were starting to pick up it looks to be a bit the same here but look they're six point clear they're as long as they don't panic, they'll be saying to them, keep it going, keep the same thing going. It doesn't matter if your mark or down get a point, as long as they don't get a goal. And that should be the mantra for, for the rest of the game now. Clonara, much in control of this game, um, much different than the opening round in the second half. It was, it was score for score and, and they were level on, on six occasions. So I think this is really Clonara's to lose from this, this point on. Be to see what they're saying over in the, on the, in the, in the market huddle at the moment because things just haven't really uh, come for them. Uh, and it looks like Jack Enright might have to go off again. And probably carrying an injury was the reason he only came on at half time. It looks to be limping off again. So uh, that's going to be a blow for, for New Market because uh, you know, they just haven't seemed to got going today. You know, they don't have that fluidity, that flow that we saw as the second half of the semi final against Clare Castle went. And they came back into that game and were really, really uh, powerful in extra time as well. But they haven't got that, that fluency today that they would have liked. And if they lost last year's final, they won't want to really lose two finals in a row. You know, this, as I said, is a building block for them. They were, you know, last year they got to an under-21 final. They pushed Broadford to a replay in the B um, and would have been happy to have just got there with such a young team. And then went on to win the minor B at the end of the year. So... This for their young players was supposed to be a stepping stone, but for Clonlara, who won the minor A two years ago, um, looks to be the, the more experienced. They seem to have the better underage talent at the moment. And Michal Lachlan has given them a bit of a pep talk there to say, just keep it going, keep it going, let's push on. Because look at the players that Clonlara are out today. They were in the huddle there beside them, the likes of Colum Galvin and, and uh, John Connell, Nicky O'Connell, uh, Tots O'Connell as well. So, you know, they're huge players to be without. So to pull up a performance like this and be six points up with, with uh, 50 minutes ago that has certainly taken that. And as well, we spoke off air before the game started about Newmarket's ability to score and the standout thing from their first three matches, both Senior A games plus the quarter final uh, in the Senior B was they registered exactly 114 mm. in every one of those games and uh, 114 I suppose it's on that verge of maybe always just not quite being enough to win games and 114 isn't going to win today because Clonair already have their 18 points. <laughs> yeah, so that, 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 that tactic, if it was a tactic, is well out the window at this stage. Look, they're going to have to go for it now at this stage. I think maybe Colin right to the edge of the square, I think, maybe something. Definitely Colin Gilfoyle, that one worked uh, the last time out. It looks like he's going to be at the edge of the square uh, for the remainder of this so I think that could be a good tactic and get the ball into him McInerney now heading towards the 21 he's heading he's, he's hoping to give him an injection the ball is in it's oh. in the corner 
backer and net from Mikey McInerney and straight from that puck out over the heads of Wint. Uh, I think it was won there by Shane Lee. Shane transferred as far as Mikey and Mikey had open country in front and got a finish. Yeah, we just kind of deed it up maybe that the market needed a goal and this could really make for a grandstand finish and this is what we're looking for from a neutral perspective definitely. Mikey McInerney came on to great effect against Eineke in the morning and got a goal as well. Really powerful runner and with Colin Gilfoyle attracting the defence it allowed the open space for Mikey McInerney and he really finished it with a plum to the back of the net so game on here. So 112 now for the market, it's 18 points for Tanara. We have, uh, I suppose, we still have roughly about 14 minutes or so to go as uh, Colin Ryan now, the man in position. Colin Gilfoyle has his hand up inside on the small square and he's saying, put it in here on top of me. And uh, we'll watch and see whether Colin can reach him from that distance. But instead, he's going towards the far over side and he's going towards Peter Power. Peter gets the hang to the ball as he beats his direct marker toward over towards the sideline. And we watch, but it's going to come across the face of goals. And out it goes. And uh, an opportunity, I suppose, with a more experienced player might have tried to recycle one. But uh, Peter decided to take it on himself. Yeah, look, he's plenty of confidence anyway for, for such a young man. They probably needed that score. It would have been a great inspiration one if he put it over, but unfortunately, uh, drifted out. And that's, I think, a seventh wide. For, for New Market. So a long puck out again down the top of Carmack O'Donnell and Carmack is the man who picks it up. He breaks inside, gets his strike off, but it's going to be shot as a no, it's just at the distance, scraped over the bar, and that's the difference where instead of being back to two, we're out to four. Yeah, look at so now just that's all they have to do is keep keep the score we're ticking over for the remainder of this game because they're well in control. That goal okay it was a bit of a setback, but and, and, until they uh, can see the second one they're they're well in control of this game. The ball breaks behind following a slight loose pull there uh, from Owen Gilfoyle and uh, Owen has been called over now by Johnny Healy. He's just explaining to him exactly what the free was for and uh, it's going to be an opportunity for to narrow away to see Ian Galvin is the man in possession of the ball at the moment and uh, Ian is actually going to leave it down. Michal at Auckland is going to make his way back and uh, from here and with the form that Michal is in all of a sudden, I suppose, that goal that was scored, uh, two of the three points could be wiped out. Yeah, and, and that's been a mantra of, of Clannara today. They've just been regularly, more, much more the consistent side in the game. And if, if he was able to put this over, or at least put it into the square, into the danger zone, it would be, would be a great boost for Clannara. The Hall now just settles himself. He's roughly 60 metres from his own goals, as we look at it. Uh, halfway between the goals and the sidelines. And uh, here he comes as he's... Pushes the ball up slightly, I suppose 62 metres away from his own goal, mm. but it goes in and Parik Gilfoyle gets his hand to it, drops it down, and the ball is clear. Colin Ryan is making his way over, tries to double on the ball, but the ball breaks behind everybody, and now there's a tussle for position there as we wait and see who comes out. It's back as far as Michal and Auckland. Michal now transferring the ball, his brother was calling Parik, but Michal goes all on his own, and he delivers that score with a clock. Yeah, it's a great score because he got away from the defence and a really frustrating one for Newmarket because they thought he overcarried the ball, but uh, it, 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 in terms of uh, personal uh, individual display, it was a fantastic move. And uh, and Michal Lachlan is really on fire today. Uh, the score is out now, 20 points to 112 now at the moment. As uh, we'll watch and see exactly what the changes are making, it looks like uh, that man uh, on the file has been called over, so uh, he's going to go into the book. It looks like of Johnny Healy at the moment, and. Uh, Possibly there was a, a couple of verbals as well there on it afterwards. Yeah, look, uh, you expect that the market will uh, get frustrated at this stage. Another yellow card there for them. He was probably lucky not to get one a couple of minutes ago. So it's just about for the market now just to keep their heads down, keep that composure and, and, and do what they did just a couple of minutes ago with Mikey Mac and Ernie bursting through because this game isn't gone yet. I know there's five points in it, but uh, they need to keep their heads down and not just have any panic. Jack O'Connor is after being introduced to the Newmarket team just there during that uh, booking and it looks like Shane Lynch is the man who is midway so Jack will be hoping to make that difference in the last 10 minutes or so as the ball breaks again to the Clannara and then in it goes to Sparbuck at Donovan but instead Parik McMahon is the man in position for the Marcus. he brings the ball out and plays it now as far as uh, David Frost who in position plays it in inside towards Peter Power. Peter again is held up as he was trying to break inside that tackle and uh, it's going to present an opportunity now for Colin who's uh, moving at a bit of speed towards the ball as they try and hurry things along to get themselves back in the game. Yeah and it's just about that this stage we just try and tackle a few points just to get that bit of confidence. There's going to be a couple of minutes at the end regardless uh, for the water break so you know just it's about asking questions of Clannard at this stage because they've had it all their own way pretty much for, for a lot of this game up, up to the goal so just for Newmarket to keep asking those questions. 
Oh, he goes in and straight over the bar from the stick of Colin Ryan, and uh, that's his fifth score for you today. It's 113 now for the mark, which is 16 points, 20 points for Tamara, four points is the gap. And uh, more and more in the market origin towards that 114 one, but they said <laughs> they're going to need another boost than that. They are, they're going to need at least 214 to bring this back on uh, to, to extra time. And uh, you know, uh, uh, is there extra, it's extra time today, is it? Yeah, extra time. So, uh, you know, they're well within their capabilities, as Claire Castle can attest to fight to uh, in that semi final. So, it's just for, for Clanara just to, to keep it going and, and try and keep that score we're taking over the other end and maybe win a few frees. That has been the, the focal point for them with Michal and Lachlan so far. Ian Galvin, the man who delivers that ball in towards Connor Burke. Connor coming out first, trying to control it, but the ball breaks and it breaks inside into the middle of a huddle now at the moment where we wait and see who comes out with it. It's the market who recycling the ball back over here as far as Niall O'Connor. Niall steadies himself, delivers the ball straight down on top of Gilfoyle, but is he going to get there? The ball breaks off Gilfoyle and it only breaks into the hands of, uh, of McMahon and uh, that, uh, that's Jayton McMahon who has possession. He gives the ball back over and it comes out as far as Ian Galvin. Ian Galvin now, short look at the stick, plays it. In it goes here now as far as uh, Dylan, Dylan McMahon across this cross it goes 45 metres out from the market goal but uh, the only man there and the only man waiting was David Frost he gets turned over and uh, Mikey O'Loughlin does as he does all days and splits the post yeah, look, we spoke about his leadership before, and that's exactly what he's providing there. And that's two in a row in terms of ones from play from him, and that's his third from play over the hour. So, you know, it's a fantastic contribution for for, for Tanara, and he has been their main leader all year, let's be honest. That comes over now, and in the barrel finds Niall O'Connor. Niall O'Connor again, shortens with the stick, he delivers it in as far as McInerney. McInerney gets out in front of Killian Pennessy, and that battle for possession now, that ball on the ground, and there's no better at tussle than McInerney, and you definitely won't get the ball over there. Or. No. Oh, no, it's definitely going to be a throw, and he wasn't going to move. That's for certain. Uh, they are going to need to see your know, market trying to get the ball in square. I said Colin Gilfoy was there. He was a great target man when they moved inside there in the semi final. So, just can they get a goal now? This is probably what they're going to need at this stage. 25 minutes just on the clock now as we look at it the throwing comes it breaks inside and uh, it's Killian Finnessy is the man with position gives it out here as far as uh, uh, as far as Parik will off them, but Parik just can't keep the ball in play and it drifts out over the sideline which Colin Ryan is coming over now to take so Colin releasing the ball and uh, knowing the I suppose the ability of Colin from the ball this one could be one in the top of the fight. yeah definitely I think that would be the intended target anyway that's for certain um, Mikey Mac Mike and McInerney is inside there as well. It goes in and it does wind its way all the way as far as uh, Gilfoyle, but as he was trying to get it, I think his brother came across. They got a bit small bit of a mix up between them and it breaks instead to Mikey McInerney. And Mikey on the twist gets his shot off and straight over the bar. And that's uh, that's 1 2 now for Mikey today. So um, from his side of things, I suppose he's, he's carried in the fight inside. And he's got to that one elusive 1 14, uh, that's for sure. But he was intending on goal, he just got caught up a bit bottled up there, which is good from a Clanara perspective. They didn't foul, they just kept him at arm's length. The ball in the side in front of Cormac O'Donovan. Cormac gets the ball in his hand. Takes on his direct marker. His direct marker being Horrick McMahon. Horrick again wraps the arms around Cormac. Pulls him to the ground. And uh, it's an uh, opportunity now for Michal O'Loughlin just to, uh, I suppose, wipe out that score that, uh, that Mikey McInerney works so hard to get. Yeah, Cormac O'Donovan has been you know, a great uh, outlet for, for, for Clannard today. And uh, another defender going into the book, Polly McMahon, going in there as well. Probably not his first. Uh, every yellow card and won't be his last I'm sure as well but uh, it, 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 this is food and drink for, for Michal O'Loughlin who has been the inspiration for him 11 points already registered by Michal 3 from play 1 from the 65 and the remainder now from play and he's hoping to register uh, the same amount of scores as the number on his back and indeed he does exactly that with his 12 point of the afternoon yeah, look, as I said before, you know, he's, he's shown that leadership this year and if they're going on to win it, which looks like they will at this stage, he's been instrumental in this. Colin Ryan now delivering that ball in in front of McInerney again, gets his pause to it, gets the shot off and it goes to the near post and drifts and drifts wide and Jalen O'Brien in no hurry whatsoever to get a replacement ball here at the moment. So he's going to steady himself and we see this ball being delivered as far down the field as he can, as far away and here it goes down on top of the 45 for Michal O'Loughlin is the intended target Michal gets his hands to it grabs possession gets it beyond his markers gets his shot off and uh, he 
Watch for the umpire just doesn't get inside the post and gets off to the right inside of White. Yeah, he set such standards now. We expected that one to go over the bar, but look, he's already uh, contributed 12 points so far. So it looks like Clan are on their way unless something drastic happens in these final few minutes. Jack O'Connor, the man who's taken the position forward, he gets his shot off and that shot drifts to the left hand side and drifts wide. And uh, the market are struggling to beat, the, to get beyond that 114 one. Yeah, they are. And, uh, you know, it's just that you knew it's the wrong umpire that's coming out, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, he was coming straight out to say it was indicating this wide. Again, a bit like Mickey McInerney's one a couple of minutes ago, he should be scoring that one, and your market need every score at this stage because you know this is a big gap to try and, and make up. Peter Power, the man to turn over, Oshin O'Brien in position, gets it as far as uh, Mikey McInerney. Mikey gives it back to Peter. Peter now gets his shot off, but that's going to hold up inside. Gilfile gets his hands to it. Is he going to get his shot off? He does, but it hits Killian O'Brien, and the ball just drifts out and drifts across over as far as Jaden McMahon. And Jaden carries the ball now as far as the 21, delivers it to Colum O'Mara. Colum gives it back as far as Jaden again, and Jaden now is going to deliver a ball down long, looking for Cormac O'Donovan, who comes at speed, gets in front of Boric McMahon, but he just can't handle on to it. And David Frost instead picks up the breaking ball as a crossfield ball is only coming as far as Ian Galvin. Ian on his own 65 can steady himself just outside the halfway line but he is more than enough distance and the ball goes straight over the bar yeah, and a bit like the first half, we spoke about the four-point swing, and again, that was a four-point swing there because uh, that was a great opportunity for Colin Gill Five. Kevin O'Brien using all his frame to use it. I think it came off his, his rear end, so, uh, you know, every bit of your, as a goalkeeper, is, is quite important. It's a crucial save for them. Ian Galvin goes down and scores at the other end, and it looks to be game over. 23 points now to 114 as we look at it. Killian O'Brien is going to take this opportunity. He's about 55 yards or so out from his own goals. Uh, and we'd be expecting this one maybe to fall in on top of Conor Burke inside. But uh, I suppose the performance of Ian Galvin even today, as we look ahead to a couple of weeks' time, obviously Brian Mohan it's going to be one of the players that he's looking at. Uh, it's his first point from play, but he has been hugely influential out around the middle. Yeah, much more of a link player. You know, we, we normally see him buzzing around the goal and we expect to see him as one of the major scorers but today he was the, the architect and the lead that with so many experienced players out and yeah definitely he's been a, a, a great link man and Cormac O'Donovan as well you have to say along with Michal Lachlan three of those have, have been the, the main the main threats for, for Clannara and, and the reason why they're, they're so far ahead in this game that free drifts in and drifts wide as we start again with a quick puck out to Enda Barrett. Now Enda's going to deliver on a long ball, but it's going to be 3 to 2 in favour of Clonaro underneath it. But where does it break? Breaks as far as Gilfoyle, but it does this time the point over, and uh, over the bar it goes. And uh, at the third attempt, they get beyond that 114. So it's 115 now from the market, 23 points for Clonaro. Just a 30 and a half minutes played, I think. Four was what Jim Hickey was indicating up to his own, I think. is So we have roughly three and a half minutes or so before you would expect Barra, Barra a bit of a miracle from the market to confirm to Lara as the CNB champions. Yeah, absolutely. You know, breaking that 114 barrier isn't much consolation when you're still five points in arrears. I think that Colin Gilfoyle chance was probably it for Newmarket in terms of trying to get back into this game. It would have given them the perfect boost at the time, but since then, you know, uh, Ian Galvin and, and Uncle Foyle have, have swapped points, so uh, looks like there's a bit of an argument here between Johnny Healy and Colin Ryan because uh, Niall O'Connor received a kind of heavy challenge that they felt maybe merited uh, more than just a, a free well, Colin Gilfoyle, or Colin Ryan looks like he's going to go into the into the book now for maybe remonstrating with that. So a lot of bookings today, and it hasn't been a dirty game, which is uh, you know the thing about it. There hasn't been a, a dirty stroke in the game, uh, really, to a large extent uh, for a final anyway. So um, you know, probably not good news for the market. They've had a couple of injuries today. Shane O'Brien went off injured at halftime. Jack Enright, he's replacing with an off injured. Um, you know, they're already missing the likes of. You know, big players for them that were missing today. We spoke about the ones missing for Clonlara, but you know, like Stephen Kelly and Owen Hayes. You know, big players for them um, when you when they need them most. And uh, uh, you know, just, they just weren't at it today. You know, the market didn't have that spark that was needed, and they'd be disappointed. But it looks like they're going to lose a back-to-back -back, uh, senior B finals, which you know. Nobody wants to lose a final once you get there. Okay, it's not the desired uh, uh, final that you want to be in in terms of maybe it's the ninth and tenth place playoff or whatever. But um, you know, the market just won't want to lose this final. And it looks like that they're in that position now. So Niall O'Connor is picking himself off the ground, and I think, as you said, that yellow card for Colin Ryan. The market is small bit upset. They would have felt that it should have been a free out, and uh, especially with a head injury, that the fact that uh, I suppose Johnny Healy didn't uh, blow up quicker than he did was. 
Colin's name into the bucket goes as we wait for Niall just to receive the last bit of attention and we're going to begin again now with a throw in from, uh, from Johnny Healy as no one was in position when, uh, when he blew the whistle to, to stop play. Yeah, look, I, I don't know. I didn't see the answer myself. I'm not doing an arson finger no one in it or anything. I didn't actually see it, so I can't tell you if it was a free or not. But I think it's just general frustration at this stage, you know, uh, for New Market that they're just, you know, frustrated with their own performance and the only person that everyone takes it out on is the referee. <laughs> Stephen Casey breaking out with the ball, Stephen is fouled out and that presents an opportunity, Colin Ryan standing over the ball, the ball is going to be brought forward now as uh, we wait and see, number 26 for Clonara, which is James Hastings, James is making his way in towards the full forward line and uh, we'll wait and see, I think Conor Burke possibly is the man who's going to make way, Conor appears to be jogging towards us and uh, as he gets applauded by the sideline off the field the ball breaks inside now from that free and in it is but who's going to come out with the ball and they're waiting for it again was McInerney Mikey pulls him up with the ball only breaks off Killian Finnessy's legs and it's there now to be one on the ground two three different players on the ground a uh, small bit of a scuffle I suppose breaking out just on the outsides of the ruck and Johnny Healy would do well as he does just to blow the whistle and uh, begin again with a show in yeah nobody was making ground there too the rugby parallels but uh yeah, no, this is what Clannara want now, just to keep it tight and just don't, don't give up a goal chance. Mikey McInerney just couldn't get it up into his hand if he had. He would have definitely had a shot on goal, but then let fly and just well, that way was locked down. So a bit of a scramble here, but that allowed through Clannara just to knock down that clock now, which has gone over the fourth minute of it in additional time. So ball breaks now on the 21. It's Mikey McInerney again. He's carrying the ball inside. Three different Clannara defenders. A little tangle of legs. Accidental tangle, to be fair. And uh, Colin Ryan now is going to have an opportunity and you would expect with the scoreboard the way it is, point is no good to him, so he might as well have a go. Well, you may as well lose his 10, his 3 at this stage, so you know, he's, he is going to have to go for it, but uh, it's just too late to really turn the turn the uh, result around, but it'll certainly get him back and, and uh, eat into that deficit and, and put more respectability on it, I suppose. Well, Colin places the ball back now as uh, Johnny Healy just wants to go in and have a word with the uh, Clonara defenders he decides there might be one too many on the on the goal line and uh, he wants to uh, spare Hurley's cleared from the back of him as we look at it at the moment so Callan now is uh, going to have the opportunity once Johnny blows the whistle here to let him go and uh, the way he's lining up it looks like he's definitely going low so we watch and we see here comes the chance in it goes but it just whizzes up and over the post and uh, it's 116 now for Marka 23 points for Clonara yeah look they needed a goal and he didn't really catch it like you expect Colin to it was, just, it was always rising and I suppose that kind of rules out the one the penalty at the other end for, for Keelan O'Brien that did something similar so I suppose even at that one uh, Keelan O'Brien now is going to have an injury even though he didn't touch the ball so that's just good gamesmanship he's a young man but he's, he's shown his experience already uh, so uh, it looks like Ken are going to win this one now at this stage you know it's only really a matter of seconds really before Johnny Healy goes out if he got a goal there would have put it back to two and then you know would there be one more puck out for Clan or for Newmarket to, to try and rob it but it would have been a steal really because Clanara have been the dominant side for pretty much the whole hour and I suppose look it, it isn't the silverware that Clanara would have wanted at the start of the year obviously they would have been one of the fancy teams for the for the Cannon Hamilton but as things have worked out obviously brought them got him in round two of the of the championship which put him through this and at least they have rebounded ahead of next year now with three wins in the trot. Yeah and as we said before about blood and young players that was a, a bonus for them because injuries have dogged their season you know uh, you know John, John Conlon the clear captain being out for the entire year was a, a massive blow to their hopes and then after that you know Kyle Tots missed the first game he came back for the second game but then that brought for game you were missing Oshin O'Brien and Colin Galvin and now we hear that Colin Galvin has gone for for Clare for the remainder of the season as well so that's a huge blow for Brian Lohan number one um, to have John Conlon and Colin Galvin gone so you know they need to be finding players you know those players we're speaking about are at the age bracket now where they're going to be picking up more and more injuries so good for their perspective to end the season in some silverware the ball breaks behind and it's coming as far as Niall O'Connor. Niall gets a touch on it, but it breaks instead as far as Parik O'Loughlin. Parik uh, just goes off his hurley and just goes out over the sideline. It's going to be a line ball now for the market just to recommence with 37 minutes on the clock. But we have had the two injuries, one to Niall O'Connor 
here uh, during at a time and then obviously Killian O'Brien going down so we'll, uh, we wouldn't expect there to be too much more to play but uh, we we'll watch and see now as uh, that line ball is about to be taken it comes as far as Parik a lock and Parik breaks it back out over the sideline and Colin Ryan now makes his way down and he's going to take it uh, Niall O'Connor was lining up to, to come forward and have a second goal with Colin besides he's in the, the right position to take it he cuts it back low as far as his centre back in the Barrett and in the delivers a long high dropping ball in on top of the 21 in on top of Guilfoyle Guilfoyle lets a break behind him Gil tries to get a pull on it but the ball breaks it breaks out off the hurley of uh, his direct marker back there which uh, I think is Paul McNamara was the man who uh, put his, his hurley in front of the shot and uh, the ball goes out and goes out for a 65 now yeah Johnny just doesn't want this game to end he's enjoying himself out there and look that's the most important thing uh, from a perspective but you know the game has petered out but in saying that, I, I don't know how much, I mean, time, much more time he's going to play, but if Colin puts this over, there's only a goal in it, so I don't know how much more he's going to play at this stage. <laughs> Oh, here it goes. Colin is dropping it in around the house inside. And the ball breaks, and Peter Power gets a whip on it, but it whizzes and it whizzes out and uh, just goes to the left hand side and goes wide. But uh, talking about time left, if that one had gone in, he probably would have definitely allowed to at least one more bucket. <laughs> yeah, 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 as I said, I think he's just uh, enjoying his day out here. But uh, you might have had the chances, you know. They wouldn't probably have deserved to come right back into this game. But you think about the goal chances for, for Colin Gilfoyle and now Peter Power. Uh, but unfortunately, that doesn't make much difference at this stage because Clonara are the senior B champions. Oh, and uh, Johnny Healy finally blows the full time whistle. Just under 39 minutes on the clock. It's 23 points for Clonara, 116 for the market. And Clonara pick up the first bit of adult silverware here in Clare uh, for 2020 from a hurling point of view. Uh, obviously, we had Junior B finals last year and last week in football, but today this was the first of the adult hurling finals. And I suppose even just looking at it from. Uh, from it's a narrow point of view, like Eddie Horgan, it is his first year into the management. Um, he would have been disappointed, obviously, to have gone out in round two, but still, he'd have learnt an awful lot through uh, the three, you know, maybe not quite with the crack game, because obviously, when I'm involved in football, they, they feel that a, a fairly weakened team in, in comparison to what they would usually have, but definitely through the semi final and, uh, and today again. Yeah, look, and they were making, you know, in years gone by. You know, you go to the championship, you put the head down and say, look, I'm uh, senior B, I'm not going to play the senior B. But particularly this year, he had no clear cup. You know, new, as you said, a new manager coming in there, Derek Conan, a new coach in there. Uh, quite uh, great to see him back in, involved in, in some capacity there as well. So, you know, they didn't have a clear cup. So you, you had to take that opportunity of a senior B, the potential of three more competitive games. And they were all competitive outside of the, the cracker one that you understood that they, they weren't going to put out their, their full team. Uh, for the senior B with that, with the football in mind, so it's been a very, very encouraging finish to the season for Clonmel. They started well against Newmarket. They finished the season with a win against Newmarket, uh, but they've got silverware. And you know, at any stage, it doesn't matter what level you're at, to win silverware is a great boost. And uh, look, they'll they'll enjoy this uh, at a social distance. So Joe Cooney, now chairman of that the Clare County Board, is just calling the Clonmel captain to the podium where he'll conduct the presentation of the of the cup but uh Clonera are going to have a little huddle before that happens first of all and I suppose look, even from an American point of view as I say it's back to back senior B uh, final losses now at the moment but again they had the opportunity similar to I suppose Clonera where we've seen the likes of Peter Power where we've seen the likes of Aina Crimmins um, lads Shane Lynch even you know uh, Owen Gilfoyle like they've had the opportunity I suppose to, to get a bit of youth into their team as well and uh, and prepare ahead of the, the start of next season yeah and speaking to John Toohey he's a new manager again and uh, you know you speak about Eddie Horgan but at least he's involved in the club and he knows the players you've got John Toohey is coming in uh, a Limerick man coming in for his, his first season involved and I think from talking to him uh, at various stages and particularly before the championship I think he knows that this is uh, a longer term project for Newmarket he knows that maybe some of the older players that won in 2012 uh, are coming to towards the end of their career and he had, they have to find new players, they have to make that transition. So he saw this transition and he mentioned the senior B at the start of the year as a, as a potential building block. And that's what has proved, okay, they would have liked to have won, but uh, it, it didn't happen on this occasion, unfortunately. And till now are the winners and they'll probably go out and have a few substantial meals tonight. <laughs> I, I suppose even just, just looking ahead, 
as we said, like so with the one thing and, and, and you have to give the market credit, like they went down the six points they were playing against the breeze, it would have easily been to say, Well look at today isn't our day, let's just finish it out. But they fought to the end, they had that opportunity if Peter Power had got that we were back to a point. Mm. Um, and whether you would say to deserve it or not deserve it, but that would have been the, the reflection that was on the scoreboard and yeah, I suppose it, it would have showed that uh, they continued to the last spot. And they did, and it was the same in the semi final, you know, that it looked like at various stages of the second half against their gas the game was gone from them but they just kept in there and kept in there it's a great character trait and look there's definitely questions couldn't be asked about the market's character you know they've shown that consistently over the past 15 years but uh, unfortunately today you know they just really weren't at it it would have been uh, an injustice if they'd come back into the game really uh, so it looks like the presentation is going to go ahead so we're going to hand over now to joe Cooney, chairman of the county board and he's going to conduct the presentation
just as uh, the Clara lads finish up their presentation, we congratulate them on their silverware. Uh, victorious in the senior B final on a scoreline of 23 points for Clonara, 116 for Newmarket, and they can look ahead to 2021 with the building blocks of this success ahead. Uh, much more activity to come from a hurling perspective here on Clare GA TV over the weekend. At 5 o'clock, we're going to be live from Shannon with the minor B hurling final between Tulla uh, and Budaik O'Callaghan's Mills, and then tomorrow we have the Junior A hurling final. Live again from Six Mile Bridge at 12:45 between Six Mile or between O'Callaghan's Mills and Kilmaley uh, in Newmarket actually sorry in Newmarket that is and then we're live in Cusick Park at half four tomorrow evening for the intermediate hurling final between Scarif and Tubber. So for now thanks to all who watched we hope you enjoyed the coverage of uh, the Senior B Championship. We congratulate Tanara on their success, commiserate with Newmarket, uh, and we look forward to speaking with you again across the weekend. Thanks very much from Six Mile Bridge and talk to you soon.